This is Power Up, where groundbreaking wind energy ideas become your clean energy future. Here's your hosts, Alan Hall and Phil Totaro. Well, Phil, our first idea of the week is from our friends at Vestas, and it's an anti-oscillation tool for wind turbine blades. And how this patent is described, is it's like a sock for your wind turbine blade with a little bit of a covering over the trailing edge serrations, and you slide this device on, and it stops oscillations during deployment. When the, when the turbine may be a little more vulnerable, it's not a full operation, maybe in lockouts where you really don't want any lift, and particularly you don't want any oscillations that could, in theory, damage the blade. Yeah, uh, and maybe it's an idea that GE should have come up with or LM should have come up with first, uh, considering some of the issues they've had this year. But uh, what's kind of fascinating about this, though, is that this isn't necessarily a new idea uh, from the perspective of putting a little sock on the end of your uh, wind turbine blade to protect the tip during a lift. Uh, Usually it's for, you know, making sure that you don't damage the serrations or whatever you've stuck on the trailing edge of the blade um in this case vestus and and i'm i'm kind of expressing my uh, opinion or suggestion here that i think vestus is basically trying to get uh you know an extra 20 years of life on a patented concept that they you know are, are potentially using on on a daily basis for that construction purpose they found another way to describe that same technology and as an anti-oscillation tool. You ever seen a device called a slap chopper, Phil? No. It slices and it dices? Oh, that thing. Yeah, I have. I have. So what they have done is since is they've taken the slap chopper and got a patent for slicing. And then when that got close to expiring, they came back and said, well, it dices too, which is a separate patent. And thereby, you can extend the same device for covering two areas. It's a very uh, unique way of, of patenting and very effective, by the way. It's smart. Yeah, it is if if you're trying to capture and protect your IP. But it also doesn't say much for the patent examiners we've ever had in, in this industry who can't seem to recognize that this is what companies are doing. Um, because this is not the first time this has happened. I can recall a few uh, examples in the past where companies you know, had, you know, their 20 years of patent protection on a concept and then repatented basically the same thing and said, oh, well, it's not for cooling, it's for vibration damping, or it's not for one thing, it's for something else. So uh, it looks like that's what's happening here. And, you know, I guess kudos to Vestas for trying and maybe not so many kudos to the U.S. Patent Office for, um, you know, allowing stuff like this to, to get pushed through. Ron Popeil made a living doing that. If you're familiar with Ronco, it's Christmas time, and every Christmas we would have another Ronco product, <laughs> which slices, dices, cooked a chicken or something. All at the same time? So our next idea is from Wind Spider, and it's a method to uh, basically raise a wind turbine tower with a crane. It's sort of uh, an erector set that builds upon itself, so it, it kind of hoists itself by its own petard in a way and it lifts itself up, you can put more infrastructure behind it, you lift it up some more, put more infrastructure behind it, and you can build a turbine tower with really no large external crane. Everything happens right on the tower itself. This has applications, Phil, particularly offshore. I think this makes a whole bunch of sense. I haven't seen it implemented though, and this patent is, is new within the last couple of months. I expect this one to happen somewhere. Yeah, this is one that if Wind Spider is going to be able to get enough capital together to do some kind of a, a prototype uh, demonstration, they might actually catch on with doing this, particularly with larger either onshore machines or certainly offshore machines where, you know, again, minimizing the amount of crane time is going to become important both from crane availability as well as how tall they could theoretically make the towers because this is basically a method for self-erecting a tower um, where you can actually put, um, and they actually go into some detail about how you can actually install the tower based on staves or segments, um, you know, and it can be a tower of either uh, concrete or steel construction, uh, or they could even plop this thing uh, to um, on top of a, uh, you know, a concrete base. Um, we talked a couple weeks ago about Max Bogle, you know, making these hybrid towers. 
um, you could use this to then construct the the steel tube portion of a hybrid tower uh, at the top. So you know it's a, it's a clever idea. Our fun patent of the week isn't all that fun. And if you've ever been a kid or if you have children, you realize that syringes are not your friend. And so when you go visit the doctor for your annual physical, you're always dreading that, oh, I think you're ready for another tetanus shot or you need some sort of booster shot, which seems to happen at every checkup until you're like 18 years old, maybe 21, maybe until you're 50 at this point. There's always seems to be another booster shot in your uh, medical chart. Well, uh, this inventor, Robert Smetton, uh, decided that enough is enough. We need to make needles more friendly. And so his invention is to modify the syringe barrel with an attachment that makes it look like a pleasing animal, like a happy bunny or a little puppy dog. So instead of seeing a syringe headed for your arm or maybe a lower part of your anatomy, uh, now you're seeing this fuzzy little bunny coming at you. So thereby permanently associating nice fuzzy animals with pain. And I cannot figure out, Phil, how this patent actually got through the process and thinking somebody was going to buy it. But here's the thing. You know, people file patents all the time for stuff that never actually gets built. I hope that this was one of them, because I got to be honest, like, this is probably the most terrifying thing that you could ever do to a child, because now it's it's a fuzzy bunny, and it's, it's not even just, like, the physical pain associated with the fuzzy bunny. It's a bunny with a needle poking out of its mouth and face. Like, this is absolutely terrifying. Like, I, I don't like needles in the first place. This would scare the crap out of me. So, yeah, I don't, I don't like this one at all. But uh, what if it's country-specific? Like, if you're down in Australia, you'd have a, a koala bear, a little baby koala bear. Bear with a needle. You'd have a hoop snake with a needle coming out of it. I don't know. You know. There you go. Right. It just it just seems terrorizing. But hey, it's a patent. <laughs> it, there's all kinds of crazy patents. <laughs> <laughs>